How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this episode of Scantober, we're going to be going over how you can use 3D scanning to take something like this, a Halloween decoration, scan it, turn it into a 3D model, and then print it out at a smaller scale. I turned this model into a 3D printed necklace. To do this, I'm going to use an app called Turnio. Turnio is an iOS app that uses photogrammetry to create a 3D mesh with textures from photos. Typically, the way that Turnio is used is by walking around an object and taking pictures using the guided interface on the app. However, for this scan, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I've never used Turnio's photo import feature before, so that's what I decided to try. Using my iPhone's camera, I walked around the skull and crossbones about three times taking pictures from a high, middle, and low angle. Each of these pictures was saved on my phone, then uploaded into the Turnio app. After uploading the files, I checked back in on the Turnio app a few minutes later to see how the mesh had progressed, and this is what I saw. So right off the bat, this is a great looking texture, and I'm really happy with the way this looks, and I feel pretty confident it's going to be a high quality mesh underneath. So. From here, the next step is to export the model as an OBJ file and then open it in Mesh Mixer so I can edit it to create a 3D file. So now that we've exported our model from Turnio, we can see it in Mesh Mixer. And it looks great, but it's upside down. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go over to Edit, Transform, and we wanna flip this right side up so we can see what we're working with. And once the model looks reasonably flat, we're also going to scale it. Right now it's showing as 6 millimeters, which is a little on the small side, and that can make things difficult for sculpting or other tools we might be using later. So we're going to scale everything up by 10, and that will give us this model. We can click accept, and click any buttons up here at the top right, and that will give us now a full view of the model. So right off the bat, the first thing we're going to notice is the texture looks amazing. This looks dead on to the original model. So the color is there, all of the detail is there, it looks really good. But texture on a 3D scan tends to be a little bit different than the mesh underneath. So if we go under shaders, we can look at the actual mesh data and we'll see it didn't capture quite as much information. It still looks pretty good and we're still going to use it for this print, but in general, when you're looking at a texture, it's important to remember it's different than the mesh. It's wrapped on around the mesh, which is the physical model. So there's a couple things we want to do in order to print this out. The first thing is we need to remove this from the background. And also, if we're looking at this model, we can see at the top of the skull, there's a bit of a hook. It's pretty thin. If we were to print that out, it probably wouldn't last very long just because it would be pretty delicate. So we're going to want to add something a little more substantial. Mesh Mixer has a library of pre-built shapes built into it. So we're going to go under miscellaneous and about right at the bottom, we've got this hook shape. So we can take this and drag it into place and we're going to put this on the model. So once we get to this point, all we really need to do is get it in place and line it up. This can be a little bit tedious. There is an option to mesh mix, which is basically just applying the primitive and snapping it onto the model. But that can be a little bit funny when you don't have a solid body. This is a surface and it can be a little bit frustrating. So it's easier just to line everything up, which is exactly what we're doing here. And we can make that a little bit larger and drag it into place. So now that we have this ring on top of the skull, we're going to click both pieces and click Boolean Union. And what that's going to do is combine the two so they can be treated as a single model. This sounds pretty trivial, but it's actually a pretty complex operation. And now you can see we've actually joined that part here and sort of cut away the bottom. So this is going to make it really easy for the final step, which is the plane cut. And once we get to that point, it'll just be a one click operation. Before we do that, though, we do want to go around the model and see if there's anything that we want to clean up first. Underneath the chin, there's a little bit of a rough spot, and I can see there's a piece in here that's sort of floating in space. So using the select tool, I can actually select it and hit X. And this is sort of folded in on itself. And typically, if you have something like this, it's easier just to go ahead and delete the whole area and remesh it than it is to try and smooth it out. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna select this area and click X. And now we've basically just removed that. So from here, we can go all the way around and click F for fill. And now it's like it was never there. 
So now we can go around the model and there's a couple of spots where it might be worth taking a minute to use the sculpt tool um, and just kind of flatten those out a little bit just so it prints a little bit easier. And then we'll sort of fade that in. And that's really about it. Everything else came out pretty good here. And I'm pretty happy with the way the model came out overall. Okay, so the final step is the plane cut. And to do that, we're gonna go into edit, plane cut. And this lets us cut the model in a way which will give it a totally flat bottom. This is really good for 3D printing and that's kind of our ideal situation. You want something that's totally flat on the base. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this and we're gonna play around until we find a nice even cut. It's a little bit art, it's a little bit science, but you want it to be flat on the bottom without having it be off center. And once we get to this point, the last part of the process is making sure our fill type is set to remeshed fill. This will create triangles on the base and click accept. And if we scroll around underneath, you'll see it's totally flat on the bottom, which is gonna be great for a printable model and the top has been attached. So from here, this part is ready to be exported as an OBJ and printed out. So let's go ahead and bring it into Prusa Slicer. So here's the model in Prusa Slicer. And just from painting around, we can see that it's flat on the bottom and it should print well, but it's mostly a bunch of upwards curved surfaces, which is kind of a worst case scenario for FDM 3D printing. So if we go into the slice preview on a lot of those vertical walls, like on the side of the teeth, it looks pretty good and it captured a good bit of that resolution but on the very top, it might look a little bit 3D printed. It's gonna have a lot of those layer lines. You could fix this by printing it upright, but then it would require a lot of support material. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. So for this model, we're just gonna print it flat and see how it looks. Using 3D scanning, we were able to take a model and print out a smaller version of itself. Pretty cool stuff. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave it in the comments, and be sure to check back for more Scantober videos. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.